Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come and run my mouth just for a few seconds. Um, girl, I had some good sleep last night. Girl, I had some great sleep. I wasn't going to come and bother y'all today. I really wasn't. But, girl, I saw some mess. Excuse me, that was going on. I know it's Sunday. I know it's Sunday. I know some of y'all just got home from church. Some of y'all are cooking Sunday dinner, you know, getting 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 the stuff together um, for the week, getting the kids lunches and clothes, laying out outfits for tomorrow. I know how I go that some of y'all out in them streets. <laughs> OK, Sunday, fun day. OK, some of y'all just got back from brunch, <laughs> the drunk about eight mimosas, came home and hopped on it and did a full split. I know how y'all do. I know how y'all get. <laughs> OK. God, I went out last night for just a few minutes, probably like 30 minutes, girl. That's all I had in me. Went out, you know, had a little cocktail. <laughs> Good, then I came home. <laughs> oh, girl, I thought that was good for me. I thought that was good. I went out for about 30 minutes and then punched it on home. I said, girl, I'm about to go. <laughs> girl, I came home. Girl, was watching TV. <laughs> and eating. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's exactly what I did. Show sure did, but at least I went out though. I went out. I went out. And that wasn't for too long, but baby, I still stepped out. I said I was going out, and that's exactly what I did. Anyway, child, let's get into this mess. <clears throat> Who are we gonna start out with first? Let, let me see. Who are we talking about first? <clears throat> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's go ahead and get him out the way. <laughs> this is a mess. This is a mess. You know, I think I'm more disgusted. Not more disgusted. Probably so. I'm just as much as disgusted as with the people who are defending the actions of this man who is six foot ten, and I think they say he weighs two hundred and fifty five pounds. Six foot ten. All right. So former NBA player Amir Stoudemire, a Stoudemire, you know I can't pronounce these folks' names, arrested just hours after receiving a master's degree from University of Miami for allegedly punching his daughter in the jaw for being disrespectful to his grandmother. I mean, to her grandmother, his mother. Um, let me bring up. So this is according to TMZ. So, um, Amir Stoudemire was arrested this weekend for DV. This after he allegedly beat his teenage daughter. The ex NBA star was booked early Sunday morning in Miami on one count of misdemeanor battery and one count of DV. He posed for his mug shot on the way in, but as of late Sunday morning, he appears to have been released from custody. According to the re arrest report obtained by TMZ, he allegedly, um, Stoudemire is alleged to have struck one of his teen daughters. One is 17 and another is 14 across the face at least twice, once with a closed fist, which was described by the girl as a punch and another being a slap. The report states that his daughter was left blooded from the hits and goes on to say the alleged victim described him as continuing to strike her body after the blows to her face. The reason he allegedly snapped per cops, um, he described discipline, I mean, Amir's described discipline ap her after she responded with attitude to her grandma. Um, when she called for her at his house, which caused him to confront his kid and allegedly dole out a whooping. The daughter um, is reported to have contacted her mother, Alexis, with photos of her alleged injuries, um, which spurred the 911 call and subs uh, subsequent arrest. <sighs> they say, I read somewhere else that I guess the grandmother had called for the daughter and she answered what? Um, and I guess, you know, he heard her say what, and he told her, I guess he was checking her about her attitude, her having an attitude again. You know what? This is what it comes down to. <clears throat> I 
And then, you know what's so crazy, y'all? If you read the comments, girl, I'm glad some of y'all got some sense. Thank God. But some of y'all, some I, when I tell y'all, I, 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 and I mean this, it should be an application process to have kids. It really should. It should be an application process to have kids. I remember one time, and I know some of y'all don't like her, but I remember one season on Real Housewives of Potomac. I know some of y'all just started watching season five, The Fight. But I remember one time on Real Housewives of Potomac, uh, Candace was in therapy, right? And she was basically talking about, you know, her, you know, I guess wanting to have kids or I can't remember if she was talking about wanting to have kids or before she brought kids into this world, she basically wanted to heal from the trauma that was inflicted on her from her mother. So she didn't pass it on. Excuse me. <clears throat> so she didn't pass it on to her kids. And I was like, this is amazing. Like the self-awareness that you have to know that girl I may be a little effed up, right? <laughs> and I don't want to do that to my kids. So let me go to therapy and try to work through whatever problems that I know that I have. So when or if I bring a child into this world, I don't pass on the that was inflicted onto me onto my children. And that's what happens a lot, right? That's what happens a lot. I think a lot of parents, I have said this, you know, some of you, I think, um, do the best that you can do. <laughs> um, but I think some, a lot of you don't realize that if your kids could really be honest about the type of parents that you were without being in fear of getting punched in the face or knocked upside the head or being thrown out on the streets, a lot of y'all will receive, receive Fs. You think that because you turned out all right and because you ain't no crackhead whore or no dope boy on the street, that that means that the way that your parents raised you was okay. Knowing damn well that you hated your mama and daddy, or mama, or daddy, growing up. So you turn around and do the same thing that was done to you to your children. I'm not saying that it would be okay if these were little boys, because it would not be okay at all. Let me make myself very clear. I don't give a damn if it was two teenage boys and he had just punched one of his sons, I would still be upset. With that being said, it does add a different, just to me, it does add a different, it adds another layer to it when I hear that you punch your daughter. And slapped her around. Because she answered what? Honey, I thought I was about to read that the daughter had snapped and brought out a gun and was shooting up the <laughs> was shooting up the condo. And he had to punch her to get the gun out of her hand. Cause she was about to snap and kill everybody in the house. That's what I thought I was about to read. Girl. Then y'all wonder why y'all daughters grow up. And then y'all want to start talking about girl, what man hurt you? Her daddy. What man hurt you? Some man must have hurt you. He did. It was a father. It was a father. It was a father. And then y'all wonder why these women go around. I know I'm going on a whole rant. Then y'all wonder why these women grow up and go around looking for love in a hopeless place and getting involved with men and thinking that this is the way that they should be treated. Because y'all say the first love is the first, the first, the first person that a, that a woman loves is her father. I remember Michelle A saying that when she first got with Suge, what's his name? Suge Knight, Suge Knight, whatever his name is. After being in a relationship with Dr. Dre, she was saying that she thought that because he wasn't beating on her, that meant that she didn't, that he didn't love her. <laughs> You see how I fuck, like, it's crazy. I think that y'all should go through the comment section and see the men and women, especially the men who are okay with this. And you need to stay away from those men. <laughs> if any, if you see any man in the comment section 
on any blog, Facebook, and they're saying that what he did wasn't wrong, bitch, you better to run, bitch, <laughs> if it's your man, if it's your man. There are people in the comment sections, I mean, I get it, but I mean, he ain't wrong, but he wrong, but he ain't wrong. Girl, he's wrong, God. It ain't no if ands, buts about it. He's wrong. Girl, he punched his daughter in the face to the point she had blood dripping down on her clothes. All because he said she had an attitude and didn't say, basically, he wanted her to say, ma'am. And because she said, what? That was enough for him to go and punch that girl in her face and slap her around. Like some nigga at a bar. This is why I hate the way black black households are built up because none of y'all were being abused for simple for saying simple answers that weren't disrespectful it just wasn't the response they wanted go seek therapy she was wrong but y'all talking about hey he's not wrong need to shut up she could have been reprimanded another way Oh, well, don't disrespect his mother. Kids are wild these days, but when they grow up and kill their parents, everybody questioning what parenting went wrong. Nobody gets beatings no more. <clears throat> That's his mother. Y'all tripping. Ain't nobody in the world going to disrespect my mother in front of me. That's why kids don't have respect now, nah, because y'all play with them. Maybe she needed it. I don't give a F. Kids disrespectful as F nowadays. The fact that somebody else wrote, the fact so many agreeing is the reason y'all be in therapy now for childhood trauma abuse. That's another thing. It's, 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 it's really crazy how so many grown people nowadays will holler and scream about childhood trauma and then turn around and say that shit like this is okay. I remember one time, because when I'm right, I'm right, baby. I remember one time, and some of y'all remember the video. I had came down her, I had came down her fussing about something. Basically about, basically some of y'all being ain't shit mamas and daddies, basically. And some of y'all got pissed off at what I was saying. And I'm not saying that those are the exact same people, but I remember it was, uh, it was a question on its on site. And people were, it, I think one of the questions was, would you still have this, if you, would you still have the same, if you had anything to do with it, like, would you still make your parents be your parents? Girl, when I tell you, it was so many people in the comment sections, just, girl, childhood trauma, I don't want my mama and daddy, girl, it was a mess, but then y'all turn around and get mad. Like, you see what I'm, like, if you're really being honest, even if your childhood, even if you wasn't getting punched around and slapped around, you could have, you, you would still say that, girl, your parents could have done a better job. <laughs> I'll believe it at that. This is a mess. Here go a black woman. Free that man. He shouldn't have punched her, but y'all know damn well these kids are not the kids our grandparents or our mamas raised. Y'all be too free-spirited in trying to be these kids' friends, and that's why this generation is way, way, way worse than any other. I said what the F I said, don't at me either. Somebody else wrote, these older black people ain't no better than white people that had them enslaved for years. Black grandparents really think they somebody master.
Somebody wrote, I bet she won't do it again. Somebody put, what is not disrespectful? It's really not. Y'all in these pro-slave master ideologies get on my nerves. Girl! That's all I got to say about him. Lock his ass up. <laughs> Lock his ass up. Lock his ass up. You're going to jail. You're going to jail. Tamar Braxton hints that someone from Real Housewives of Atlanta and their husband threatened her. So this is what she had to say. I was threatened by a peach and a man. I got a story. Y'all want to hear about it? But because they don't want y'all to know how effed up they are as people and city officials, they ain't said ish. I was threatened by a peach and a man. It's funny to me that no one said anything. Maybe but maybe because they don't know. Maybe maybe because they don't know what you know. Well, hold up. Maybe because they don't want oh, I'm sorry, maybe because they don't want you to know who they really are. It's beef and it's a real beef because your husband stepped to me. Period. Merry Christmas. Girl, Tamar, I don't know, child. I'm not saying I'm not saying Tamar is lying, but girl, I don't I don't like like girl. It's some stuff. If you're gonna come out and shake the table like this, girl, then girl, just drop the names. <laughs> girl, drop the names. Because girl, we know it ain't Kenya and Mark. <laughs> okay? We know it ain't Sheree, because Sheree ain't got no husband. We know it ain't Marlo. <laughs> who else? Who else on the who um it, it, it's either Drew or Ralph, Candy and Todd Burris, or Ralph or, or Sonya and her husband. I think those are the only three that are married out, out of the cast. Unless she's talking about an old peach holder. Do we want to hear the story? You know we want to hear the story, Heifer. <laughs> Just come out and tell us who it is. Maybe she waiting to tell. Don't she work at Dish Nation? Don't she? Or was that just like a little, a little gig she was doing? I thought she was working at Dish. I don't know. Maybe she's going to come out and tell us on Dish Nation tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know, child. Um, Walmart cancels Gunna holiday giveaway following his release from jail. Some of y'all are outraged, but I don't blame them. You know, one thing I learned at TSU is sometimes you have to stop thinking like, um, sometimes you have to think like you have to put yourself in the shoes of a consumer, right? But sometimes you also have to think as the employer, the person who's running the company, the person who's running the business, you have to put yourself in both, in, in both shoes, I don't think Walmart was wrong for doing this. I'm going to tell y'all why. So Walmart cancels gun a holiday giveaway following his release from jail. So Walmart has canceled a, ho has canceled a holiday giveaway hosted by Atlanta rapper Gunna, who accepted a plea deal and a RICO Act case against him. The event was set to feed hundreds of local families on a Sunday in South Fulton um, at a store on Old National Highway. About 1,000 pre-registered families were supposed to receive $100 gift cards. Um, South Fulton police said the department was working with Walmart to address security needs at the event. Um, was it Gooder, was, which was partnered with Ghana in the past, expressed disappointment in a statement. Um, they were sad to learn of Walmart's decision to cancel the fifth annual Ghana's Great Giveaway event today. Ghana and the entire is it good or team? We're uh, looking forward to brightening the holidays of 1,000 families that registered. We are aware of how much the promised gifts meant to these families. We are collectively working to find an alternate solution. Registered families will be updated about the event status. Gooder apologizes for any inconvenience this unexpected turn of events has caused. While it's sad for the families, that's definitely a sad situation because people need money nowadays. 
I also understand why they canceled it. Girl, why are y'all acting like this man didn't just get out of jail? Girl, and we know how y'all act about people who y'all think have snitched or are rats. Why would they want to hold an event where this man could potentially bring chaos and confusion? We just got to cancel the whole thing. Sorry, we know how y'all niggas act. <laughs> we know how y'all, girl, it, it, it pulls at your heartstrings when you think somebody is a rat. So why would they have all these women and men and kids at, at this event just for it to turn into, girl, a possi possible, girl, bloodbath? Because a couple of people want to roll by and, girl, pull out, bang, bang, shoot them up. So, no, we have to cancel it. We have to cancel it. We have, it's too much. It's, it, he, it, we have to cancel it. <laughs> girl, we have to cancel it. And then also, girl, why would Walmart want to be associated with someone who just said they were guilty for a RICO act? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, y'all have to look at it from their, their point of view, too. I feel like it would be better, even if they didn't want to even concentrate on the fact that he just pled guilty or said that he was guilty or whatever. Girl, you, you, could, you could possibly bring too much <laughs> over here. So we're going to have to just cancel it. I don't blame him. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't. I know some of y'all were upset in the comment sections, but I, I, sorry. We can't do it. We can't do it. Hopefully, you know, you guys can find another way to help these families out, but it won't be over here. <sighs> Romeo calls out his dad after Master P responds to his post about trauma. You aren't the man who um, you paint to be. So Master P came out, you know, the back and forth between Master P and his son, Romeo. He came out and this is what Master P had to say. This new generation of kids need to stop blaming their parents for everything. How do you think they got to where they are without their parents making sacrifices for them? Mental illness is real and so many families are tragically affected by it, especially when, it, when there is added trauma like death of a loved one. Social media is not the place for healing. Son, I love you. Stop trying to get people to feel sorry for you and let's come up with a solution. You can come talk to your father and your family like a man. You have kids too. No family is perfect, but together with God, we can heal and get through this. Romeo then responded and said, this was my last straw pops. Stop trying to play the victim. I love you so much that I followed you blindly for 30 plus years. You know, we've talked behind closed doors. You aren't the man who you paint to be and why it is war because I refuse to follow your lead. You only want to protect your image, but the image isn't even real. And I don't and I don't need anyone to feel sorry for me, Pops. I'm truly a man of God. If you are really a man of God, then you will prevail in the end, even when I share my truth. I've tried to keep things in the house. You are addicted to social, to social media and unfortunately use this app as therapy. 3K plus post and when the world find out about the finances outside. Wait, I don't know what that means. 3K plus post. Um, and when the world find out about the finances outside of a gift or a car. I've never been paid for anything I've accomplished as little Romeo, Uncle C, and Silk No. You only pay outsiders rightfully so they'll speak good on your name. I'm at peace because I, because I can now speak my truth and help others. Mom was always right. Your pride is everything. That's the part that stuck out to me. Remember when all that mess was going on between uh, Master P and his ex, uh, well, ex-wife and I felt like he was kind of doing her dirty the way, girl, y'all been with, you've been with this woman for how many years, girl? But anyways, I believe Romeo. Here, here's another example of a parent who, while yes, let me just say this, while yes, it does get to a point where we're all grown, but see, that's the problem too, right? Because we get to a point where we're all grown, right? Mama and daddy is all grown. Now, their baby now we're grown men and grown women. So they tell you 
to come to come to speak to me like a man, but they're not going to respect you like a man. Because if I start really having a conversation with you like a man, you're not going to like it. If I start really having a conversation with you like a woman to woman, you're not going to like it. I'm being disrespectful. So a lot of these parents, I hate to say it, not y'all, but y'all, girl, y'all be talking out of both sides of y'all neck. Because you really don't want your kids to come and talk to you on some man to man shit or some woman to woman shit. Because as far as you're concerned, you should stay in a child's place. It could be a 40-year-old woman or a 50-year-old woman. I'm sorry, I believe Romeo. I believe Romeo. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I believe Romeo. Sorry. I believe it. Definitely believe it. Anyways, y'all let me know what y'all think. All right. I'm about to go in here and fix me. Uh, I had made some sloppy joes last night. I had some meat left. I'm about to go ahead and just make me a little quick sandwich. <sighs> then, girl, I might watch Love and uh, I'm, I'm so over Love and, Hun Love and Marriage Huntsville. I don't know who the fuck Carlos King think he is. Girl, I know he walk around here calling himself the king of reality TV or whatever he calls himself. But Carlos, girl, you, girl, you're not that girl. Girl, ain't nobody. <laughs> girl, you really think you can give us 30 episodes of Love and Marriage Huntsville and think that it's okay? Like, girl, it's, girl, talking about trying to milk. <laughs> and it's not even, girl, it's one thing if we were really like, girl, this is really, really, girl. You could have ended this at really episode 20. No tea, no shade. The show is not that great. There's no show out there that that's great. Girl, even Real Housewives of Atlanta don't even get, girl, they're giving us 16, 17 episodes down at the end of the reunion. So, girl, you're going to give us 30 episodes and then probably a two-part, three-part reunion? Nobody gives a damn about Martell and Melody anymore. We love Kimmy, but we tired of crying. But we love Kimmy nonetheless, right? And that's real life, so we're going to watch it. Girl, <laughs> we ain't heard from Lewis and <laughs> girl Tiffany in weeks. We don't know what Destiny had. <laughs> girl. Marceau ain't going to never be shit. Tisha going to be foolish and always stick beside her man. That's who she is. She stick beside him, fish. Girl, so. <laughs> Anyways, girl, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, y'all.